I'm Don Seleski. You're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? <laughs> What's up, Rigorelia? Doing all right? Yeah, just happy to see you. It's yeah. been a- it's been a minute. It's been a week or so. Looking pretty fresh. Since we were in Boston oh. together. Yeah. One of our good friends oh. from uh, Fans of Philly. We had a good trip. Yeah. See our buddy Reamer get celebrated for his thousandth game, which we already talked about. But it was cool to be there to watch the ceremony and um, see uh, Jimmy Montgomery and a few of the guys and some of our guys as well after the game. We got to... Talk to the boys for a few minutes. Tough game. They fought. Yeah, they fought. They fought back, man. God, you, they never quit. They never quit. Mm-hmm. But um, good trip. Yeah, it was. I got to see you for one day. Anyway, oh, you, know, you know, celebrating forty two. Celi- celebrating. You know God, goes. you're older than me now. I know. Because I had to celebrate on Monday. Wait the next till you're forty two. I, I can't you wait. You won't even know. I won't know what, what to do with yourself. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long ago. I forgot about it. But uh, good to see you, buddy. Glad you can make it. Debo and Ball have been sitting here all day waiting on you, and you finally got here. Yeah, I was recovering from my pickleball game yesterday. With night. Homer? With Homer. Did he hit himself in the face again? or He did not. No. <laughs> I saw him. You know, He's pretty, uh, pretty contained. Pretty. Was he? Oh, yeah. Did he get mad? He must have won then. I think he wanted to get mad. He, we were on a team, actually, together. Oh, uh, he wanted to get games. mad? Well, I had some horrible shots. <laughs> well, my second time playing, so. Right. Had a couple bad shots where I'm like, I could just like he can't understand I can just, that. No, he can't understand that. I could <laughs> just can't. see like him being upset with me and like, the bad shot. But he's like, <laughs> he's like, let's try Riles. Let's well, try after Riles. after you told me about him hitting himself and his, you know, the bandage, I saw him at the game oh. like a day later, and I still he cut he had on his to, nose. And I'm like, I was like, how'd you do that? And he goes, oh, I hit myself. <laughs> you know, and I said, I know. Riles told me. Yeah, but uh, it's a lot of fun now. So we gotta get you out there. I, I'm ready. I played tennis my whole life. I, I want to play though. I, I, You're I really quick and do. limber. Yeah, I think so. I think I think you get the hips. Uh, yeah, up, but you got to open those. Things uh, we up. didn't have a game last weekend. We had a bye week. You finally were like, "Hey, what time's the game?" I know. Oh, I was yeah. ready to you, rock. You already Thanks knew pack. we had a bye. No, I didn't. You saw Thanks the group pack. text. <laughs> Packs, pack. Which one? <laughs> you don't have any gear. Skates, nothing. Um, but uh, anyway, good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Good to be back. Oh, yeah. Um, Flyboys, Baller was saying, ESPN was saying in the next seven, they were, weren't going to win one. They want to. Well, what does ESPN know? I don't know. They obviously didn't get that right. They got hockey, like seven, eight sport well, on I mean, their docket. That's, that's unfortunately the way of the world. I know. So but they really don't have the scoops. They don't. We do. They don't. Um, we got to get on Kobe going about that because he works for them a little bit. That's right. Um, but they went 2-3-2 two, and two in those games. And, um, you know, we were at the boss. They lost to the Bruins. They lost to Florida. They lost to the Maple Leafs. But then they turned around and beat the Bruins and the Maple Leafs. And uh, overtime losses against Carolina. And last night's game was unbelievable against New York. Yeah, man. Talk what an a effort. About that. What an effort. I mean, yeah. You look like they look like they're out of it. And they just kept coming back, scoring goals. It's fun to watch. It's um, tough to lose that game, but but at the same time, you get a point, and they deserve probably better. I mean, both obviously the Rangers are a really good team, but uh, what a game! Just yeah. kept clawing and fighting, and if they can get themselves into this playoffs, man, like I wouldn't want to play them. I'll tell you I that. Know. I know they're relentless. Relentless and. Uh, you're in a dog fight, so I can't imagine any team wants to play the Flyers. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't just because they believe they could win every That's game. It, right? You know, it's it's the way it is. But um, while we were not together, um, Sean Couture, who's just recently named captain, was scratched two games in a row, which wanted to get your thoughts on. I know I just felt like 
I was a little extreme, even if he hadn't played well or scored a goal in so long. I just think he's the captain. Um, he's a pretty valuable guy. We've talked about him a lot. And, you know, it's Torts' right to do that as a yep. coach. He is. Um, if he feels like he's pushing the right buttons. They did get three out of four points, but it, I don't know. I just, you know, he's not a kid. He's he's a leader. He's your captain. He's played a long time. He's The whole time he's played, he's been here, obviously, as a flyer. But, you know... Could look at it on both sides of the coin, I yeah. guess. You know, what, what what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I see it both ways. I mean, he has every right to not play him, right, based on productivity. And um, just interesting timing, you know, just being named the captain. Yeah. I understand he was in a, you know, pointless drought there. And uh, he probably wasn't playing up to his expectations. So, you know, naturally as a coach, like, you're, you're trying to push buttons and get the guys rocking. I guess, I, I guess maybe I struggle a little bit with – the lack of communication with your captain, you know, it right. didn't sound like there was much of it. Or, That's the way know. it sounded, yeah. So maybe, you know, from that perspective, I think, again, he, he's your captain. So I think that relationship needs to be solid. Right. Um, you know, it, 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 to me, that would probably be the only issue I have if there's any truth to that lack of communication right. or, or whatnot. But, um, but, Torts is notorious for, you know, for scratching yeah. whoever's not playing. Well, it don't matter who you are. So it's, it. it's like yeah. it's consistent, and the guys know. I think message received. I think for Coots, it's just responding to it, and yeah. you know, accepting that he needs to play better. I think, you know, I think that's just the nature of the beast, right? I mean, yeah. But I, I think it's just like. Ish. It's a fine line, you know. You know, you, not that you're going to lose him, but like, right? Yeah, you, you he's be careful. a pro. Like, he's, yeah, right. He's a pro. He's he's got his head screwed on in the right way. Yeah. Um, but I just think that there's just a way to maybe scratch your older veteran players versus yeah. like a rookie, where you can maybe send the assistant coach over and say you're not playing the night, and right. you know, just get a practice in, you know, get a little yeah. work in, and you're good to go. You know, thing. There's a little bit more explanation. It needs to be right laid out there but other than that i don't have a problem with it you know it's it's part of the game and it doesn't matter who you are you know i just i just felt like him being the captain him being as important as he is and maybe he hasn't been at the top of his game we also do have to take in consideration he hasn't played two years but you know sean coots isn't gonna make excuses no um he had been on a bit of a scoring drought but that happens to everyone, but just I just thought it was a little extreme in my opinion. Uh, I do like the way Torts has these guys playing every night and all that, but I thought it was a little extreme. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Yeah, and then and then the other thing I'll say is, you know, you're you're in the limelight. You got media, and I think there maybe needs to be a little more explanation. Yeah, or maybe not. I mean, I don't know. Like yeah. you know, like you, like it's your captain, and he's been been a captain for what like 30 days yeah you know yeah. like or whatever it was um may, maybe a little more insight to the public right i mean i understand some some things as an organization keep to your chest 100 percent, yeah. but maybe a little more transparency because then all of a sudden you got like you know p- people question you know what i mean and just like you're making yeah. stories up right it's right like, is right it, is torts and coots good this They're, and that like you, you know reaching. what i mean you start you start reaching and yeah. then i think that's where it gets a little fluffy so maybe a little more transparency could have could have helped the situation but right i think it's water under the bridge now and yeah you know, so. message received and you know the show must go on yeah you know for so. sure and you know coots like he's a, he's on the quiet side as far as you know just like he's not a loud boisterous guy and he doesn't want to make waves right um and he just wants to play hockey. That's it. What he wants to do and win, and win. so mm-hmm. hopefully that's all. Like you said, water under the bridge, and we you know, march forward these last few games. Yeah, try to sneak into these playoffs here or hold our spot yep. and get in. Um, some some sad news. Real sad. Um, really sad news. Couple couple things. First, uh, Chris Simon, uh, big chief there. Uh, man, I. I lucky enough to know him a little bit. Met him years and years ago. Um, you know, Christ when he was playing with Quebec wow. before they left and Jeez. um always was just such a nice guy and every year, you know, I'd see him shoot the shit with him. Um unfortunately, you know, not with us anymore. And I know you had a scrap with Big Symes. Mm-hmm. Um sad. Yeah, I mean it's sad. I mean 
it don't matter who the person is, right? Even in hockey, or right. you know, just 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 the state of affairs that we're in as a society. But you know, the mental health crisis is real, and you know, obviously, Chris was struggling, and you know, you don't wish anything like that on your worst enemy, no, you know, and. Not at all. Uh, one of the toughest dudes to ever play. Not even just tough. You can play the game. You talk about a power forward. And, yeah. um, you know, it just gives the NHL a black eye. 52 years old. I mean, he's my second NHL fight. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, a lot of respect for him. And grew up watching this guy. And, you know, grew up not too far from where I was in Winnipeg there. Um, it's, a, it's a shame. And, you know, I think this is really going to highlight this conversation around, you know, the, the CTE and, you know, uh, maybe the NHL acknowledging the correlation between repeated head trauma and CTE. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, you know, I think they need to own that, right? Um, but beyond that, like, like this the substance, you know, substance abuse, and there's there's other stuff besides that, right? I right. mean, because we all know, like, the life exists outside of hockey or fighting. Getting punched in the face clearly not great for brain health. But I think a lot of these guys are dealing with more more it's trauma more than, than than that. Right. That probably exasperates it. But you know, if you peel back the onion, you know, you probably got some childhood trauma. You know, you got some substance abuse that's probably burying the childhood trauma, and then you get you know, the added element of fighting. You know, fighting yeah. legit heavyweights for how many years? Obviously, not. It's not great. And then adding more substance abuse on that, and you know, it's just not a recipe for mental wellness, right? right? So. I, I think the NHL as a whole it could do a better job supporting their players. I think a great step in the right direction would be, I don't know how it looks legally, to, for them to start owning that piece, right? I mean, right. I think the UFC and the boxing, boxing commissions have, have made the correlation between, or at least admitted the, the correlation between repeated head trauma and CTE, which can't be diagnosed until you're dead, from what I understand. So, like, the, right now, the speculation is, oh, he's got CTE. We don't know that yet. Right. Right? Um, but, I mean, th there could be a lot of underlying issues there. But at the end of the day, it's tragic, no, no matter how you look at it. Um, it's a black eye for the NHL, you know. I think yeah. we could do better for our fellow brethren, um, you know, whatever that support system looks like and help help guys out a little more. I know yeah. it's not that easy because it's complicated. Right. Life's complicated, yeah, right? Everyone's got personal issues. Yeah. So it's not as cut and dry as what we make it seem sometimes. But, uh, you know, wish his family the best yeah. and send out love Prayers. to, Prayers to friends and family. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, do better in the future. And then, you know, on top of, of Cy, you know. Yeah, you, uh, Konstantin Koltsov, who yeah. was uh, in the Penguins organization, actually played quite a few games with Pittsburgh over a three-year span, I think. Um, you know, tragically ended his life. It's, it's sad, man. Yeah, you know, it's we sad. don't know what's going on there either, but uh, it's just uh, not good. Yeah, not good. Sad. Good. Like you said, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't mean just because he played hockey, it's anyone – that's going through those things and uh it's it's sad yeah it's sad and and you know to to your point there is like this is not a you know a fighter issue right i mean right. this guy wasn't a fighter right he Cy was obviously but i think you know life is challenging and you know the, people are feeling the squeeze you know it seems like everything is kind of dark right now and you know yeah personal issues combined with you know some societal and political issues who knows what is um is the the force at b here but like i think it's, it's showing that this is more than just fighters you know this is yeah, you know the, for sure the situation we're in is beyond that but again i'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that getting punched in the head for a living is great for your mental health right but um it certainly attributes to probably some some negative repercussions down the road but I think this is just highlighting the larger problem here yeah. we're dealing with because the suicide rate through the roof, where I understand, is it, where the suicide rate is through the roof, from what I understand, right. and beyond yeah. what it was before. Um, so we, we just need to do a better job in supporting people yeah, outside, inside hockey culture. I mean, just uh, just supporting humans as yeah. they are. So I wish all their families the best. Yeah, I wish them the best, um, both both families. Yeah. Um, on to some happier news. Mm -hmm. Our buddy TJ Oshi, yeah, just, Osh. uh, played his 1,000th game. I was messaging back and forth with him. Great guy, man. Mm -hmm. uh, great accomplishment. Yeah. You know, awesome. No coincidence there. You no. Know, 1,000 games is not easy to do. No, it's not. 
Um, so congrats, Osh. Yeah. You're the man. Um, Flyer signed a goalie. Yeah. They sure did. Alexi Kolosov. And Baller says this guy's legit. So when Baller goes out, you know, he's an insider. He this guy knows flying stuff. To, flying to Russia, scouting yeah, him out, he, getting the inside scoop. Baller so saw back. him play last week while we were, you know, busy. He went over and saw him, and <laughs> he said this guy looks legit. Yeah. And Debo confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Be, Debo watched scoops. his dogs while he went. <laughs> but uh, not your brother's isn't. My bad. Um, but anyway, um, you know, supposedly this guy's a good goaltender. We don't know what's going on in the future with, with um, you know, Everything, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully, he is a good goalie. Yeah, right. Um, our boy, the Wayne Train. Oh man, Sim Daddy. Whew. He's going to sign a one day contract. Is he playing that game? You put him in front of the Throw net. Throw him in front of the net. Torque power play. Yeah, right. You never yeah, know. Right, right. What if he went in there and buried one? <laughs> he might sign him to another day. I would put money on <laughs> if they if you put him out there for the three four power plays to get that he'd game. He probably get one. You get one. He probably would. A redirect to <laughs> oh, rebound yeah, or something. something. Just put him out there. We don't have to skate a whole lot. Yeah, Just right. Like... April thirteenth against the Devils. Uh, they're gonna be doing the celebration. Yeah, and, uh, we're hoping to get Wayne in the house here in the stew. Oh man. Um, before he's gonna be here for about four days. So um, it's it's uh it's exciting. I'm so happy. He, he did say. A little while back that he was gonna be he was gonna be here so um, he was telling the congrats truth. Yeah, yeah congratulations what a, what what a, a career, career man. man what a guy you talk about a guy born to be a Philadelphia Flyer man he was God he I've heard so many people say he was my favorite for sure he I mean, never guy, left honestly I, mean, I wish he had even on his worst day he's still a Flyer I you know, know. I, mean? I, I he remember still fits in the lineup the former GM saying well we're not just gonna trade him to trade him well you kind of did. Yeah, kind of traded him to trade him, but uh, he was a flyer, and um, he's gonna retire a flyer. And yeah, I love it. I love the man. A big night, great guy. April thirteenth. Um, yep, can't wait. What else you got, Nas? Well, that's about it. It's almost that time. It for is our guest. One fifty one. One fifty one, Debo. One fifty one. One fifty one with the big bird. Big bird, Don Seleski. Yes. Let's go, Nas. Let's go. Before we jump into our interview with Don Seleski, a quick message from our good new friends at AG1. Nasi, you've given AG1 a try for some time now. What are your thoughts? I'll tell you, I, fir- I first gave AG1 a try because I was feeling a little sluggish uh, midday, not as focused. I saw an ad and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. And honestly, since drinking AG1, I felt so much better, so much more energized, not losing focus, not getting the midday, uh, you know, where I want to take a nap or anything like that. It, it really has uh, made my health feel like so much better. No, oh, that's amazing. And you've been able to replace a good chunk of your synthetic multivitamins with AG1, uh, supporting your, your gut health, the prebiotics, the probiotics, uh, vitamin C, the zinc to support your immune health. Yes, How's that it, been going? It's great. I, Every morning when I get up, I mix it, drink it, and I'm, like, ready to go for the day. And I'm assuming you would recommend this to your friends and family based on your experience so far? You're right, Riggs. If there's one product I would recommend to elevate your health or any of my friends, it's AG1. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash knuckles. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash knuckles. Check it out. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. And this week we are thrilled to have a former member of back-to-back Stanley Cup champions, 73, 74, 74, 75, he played nearly 550 games in the NHL, including 82 playoff games. Played nine years in the show, six seasons in the nearly six seasons in the black and orange. Please welcome Big Bird, Don Seleski. How are you, sir? Great, great. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Doing Thanks well. for uh, taking the time to join us. It's a pleasure. It's awesome. awesome. I, I'm curious before we really get into this. So in '69, you're drafted, right? Yep. That's when. The Big Bird character was introduced. You're a tall it's awesome. man. You're a t- I know. You're a tall man. You had the locks, the curly locks. The name kind of fits. Who gave it to you? Well, I, it, that's interesting that uh, 69 was the year that uh, 
that Big Bird came into existence. I had never put that together. <laughs> but uh, And I had short hair then, so, you know, oh, it wasn't right. like, okay, uh, okay. like there was any locks. That, but the way that name came was like a lot of our names on the flyers came. Um, there, everybody had – would always point back to Clarkie. So we were in warm-ups before a game one day. And, the, you know, the glass was real low, so people could lean over the glass and we'd communicate with them and talk to people. And there was a little kid looked down and I was standing right next to the glass and he says, uh, hey, Mom, that guy looks like Big Bird. And Clark, he was standing there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He couldn't wait to get in the dressing room. He was like, hey, Big Bird. Uh, yeah, oh, that's yeah. great. So, and, and that was it. After that, it was everything was Big Bird. And oh, then uh, Kinderchuk, uh, you know, then he got... Oscar the Grouch, because oh, he's, a, oh, he's yeah. such a miserable prick. <laughs> he's never happy. He's always yeah. grumpy. So he, and then oh. uh, Schultz, he got the hammer after that. So oh man, Some good nicknames. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. Yeah, that yeah, is, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I wondered if it was it was Clarky or something like that, but that's pretty. Good. That's pretty interesting how that came yeah. about. And you uh, know that's gonna stick, eh? When Clarky comes in and oh, just yeah. throws it out there. <laughs> yeah, when, when Clarky delivers the message, it's <laughs> yeah, <forever>. right. <laughs> You know, Clarky was in that draft as well, uh, and Hammer, right? In the Hammer, sixty nine, uh, I think. Clark, uh, the Hammer, uh, the guy that was the number one draft choice was a guy named Woody Courier, who was uh, only played in the minors. He played a couple games oh. with the Flyers, and he's, I think, he was a cop in Cornwall, Ontario, afterwards when he retired. But there was uh, Willie Brosard, okay. um, played for the Flyers some in Toronto. Um, and then, uh, we had a couple other guys. There was like, uh, six or seven guys oh, that wow. wound up playing in the National League. Ah, good draft. Uh, but yeah. yeah how, how do you, find, like, so how, did you ha go to the draft or was it, how was it? No, no. And it's a lot different, you, obviously. You, you now. know what? I'll never forget that because we'd gone to the Memorial Cup and, and, uh, that year we played against the Montreal Junior Canadians. And along the way, as you won the West and the East, you could they could add uh, three players, right? So Montreal can ju Junior Canadians were stacked. They had Rajon Houle, Bobby Lalonde, Mark Tardif, uh, Mickey Redman. Uh, you know, uh, I could go down the line. And then when they won the East, they picked up uh, Bobby Sheehan, uh, Marcel Dion, and uh, Jimmy Rutherford. Oh, wow. So. You know, it's like we had no shot, and they beat us in four games. I remember going down to Montreal to the Forum and walking into the Forum, and our coach, uh, we called him Black Bart. His name was Bob Turner, who was a, played for the Montreal Canadiens. And I, I must have, my eyes must have opened, like, huge when I looked at it and saw the Montreal Forum and 18,000 seats. And he said, uh, hey, Satch, that was my nickname then, they could put a lot of wheat in here, couldn't they? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, no kidding. No. <laughs> and so uh, and, and they beat us four games straight, and I had, uh, I think that's probably what got me drafted uh, because uh, I had uh, four goals and four assists in four games, oh, wow. and I, I led our team in scoring. And I wasn't, we had a lot of other guys on the team that were supposed to come ahead of me in the draft. And the draft day, we got together at, together at Molson's Brewery with our coach because everybody was anticipating that, uh, you know, that we're, about five or six of us were going to get drafted. And I, they didn't think I was going to be one of them. And then uh, Ron Garwaziak was drafted in the second round, and then it went quiet. And I was the only other draft choice off of the team. And uh, when I talked to Keith Allen uh, later on about it, he said, uh, we asked your coach about you. And he said, Selesky's a diamond in the rough. So he oh, said, wow. I, I'd, I wouldn't uh, pass up on, on him uh, when awesome. it came wow, to the fifth that's round. Really cool. It's amazing, so, yeah. Worked yeah, out well. It's good stuff. Yeah, you gotta take that advice, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Diamond in the rough. Diamond in the rough. Yeah, like yeah. They're still looking for those. They look for those diamonds in the sure rough. Sure, they right? do. Yeah. They're nuggets. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. Right, especially these days. Yeah. You make up for some draft picks that land up being busts, too, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta fill some holes. And I mean, 
I think some teams do a better job at finding these guys. I think uh, Detroit's done a good job, you know, over over the years, maybe finding these guys in Russia and you know wherever else they're scouting Tampa these guys. Well. Tampa, Tampa Tampa's done a hell of a job. They finding do a some great job, right? Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that team's solid now. They look yep. really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago they were like looking up. Yeah. You know? Big time. They're finding some of these high end players and, and drafting them later and in, in, in draft and them turning out to be elite players too. Yep. Some of these guys. Well, it takes big guys longer to develop. You know, some of the guys that they draft in those later rounds and those nuggets that they find will be big guys that are still, you know, not as coordinated, underweight because they've they body has grown, but they haven't grown into their body, yeah, uh, size wise, and uh, and just uh, developing your skills takes longer and your speed and everything else that goes mm-hmm. with it. So, That's right. you know, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the current game compared to, obviously, a little different animal than when you played, but uh, you, you enjoying know, the game? I'm one of the guys that I love today's game. Mm-hmm. But when I look at the game, people say, ask me all the time, what are the big changes in the game? And to me, the biggest changes have been adding a referee hmm. mm, yeah. and video when i played there was one ref and the shit that you did (laughs) away from the puck was what changed the tempo of a game yeah uh and so you know the intimidation factor was way different now with between videos and two refs you can't do anything on the ice the other big change to me which was a huge game changer was eliminating the two line pass. Oh yeah. yeah. That opened totally opened up the game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. And and changed the dynamic of that trap and eliminated all that cuz that's what we used to basically play. Right. Everybody played the trap. Mm-hmm. And so now that you could gain that extra zone, when you look at guys like uh that uh, take advantage of it. And Morgan Frost does it better than anybody I've seen. I mean, the way he yeah. flips those passes. Yeah. That, that goal last night against uh, the Rangers. Yeah. Uh, on his on his flip, it's like uncanny how good he is at it. So yeah. getting rid of that. And, and then to me, other changes are the players are just far more skilled. We never used to develop our skills like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I... You're probably the same as me when we grew up. It was all on your own. You went out and you developed on your own. I That's didn't it. have hockey schools. I didn't have anything. Anything I learned until I started junior hockey was all just working on my own and maybe some input from my dad or something like that. But, uh, you know, now their skill level, uh, their training, yep. they're finely tuned. Mm-hmm. Uh, the things that they can do with the puck, the speed of the game yeah, is insane. off the charts. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's, I like all that stuff. What I don't like are these ticky tack little slashing penalties. And, uh, you know, we used to knock guy's stick out of his hands and we'd say, hold on to your fucking stick. Yeah. 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 I mean, dude, exactly. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. what are you doing? Uh, you know, but the, the slashing and some of those obstruction penalties and stuff, I think that kind of takes away from the game a little bit, but overall, I enjoy the heck out of the game. Yeah. Enjoy the heck out of watching this Flyers team. Right yeah, now. no yeah, doubt. So yeah, exciting. they're a hell of a team right now. Yep. Uh, the thoughts, I mean, you, you grew up obviously playing in the, in the Broad Street Bully area, era, obviously major physical play. Obviously the current game, not a whole lot of it. I mean, how do you feel about that? Are you, you good with it because of the skill level and everything else is kind of in line? You know, truthfully, I like what I see the Flyers have done. Yeah. Because... I was never, you know, fighting intimidated me, quite frankly, if you want to know the truth. I was a, uh, you know, I was a chirper and an instigator and I caused a lot of problems and got things going. But I always had like Schultz and Kelly and DuPont were there and, yep. you know, I could <laughs> stir a lot of shit and get away with it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but when I look at, when I watch the Flyers model of play and Florida, uh, you know, yep. and some of these other teams like that, they're banging. Yeah. yeah. They are taking the body. Freddie used to say, get the puck in deep and arrive in ill humor. Oh, and you know what? Like that. That's what the Flyers are doing. Mm-hmm. When you look at what these guys are doing, getting the puck deep, getting in there, first guy's taking the puck, banging, and uh, 
trying to create the opportunity and, and getting on the defenseman hard. And so I, quite frankly, I enjoy the, the brand of hockey they're playing today. Yep. You don't need to fight. No, I agree. You know, but the hitting, don't take the hitting out of the game. No, That's exactly. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. It's probably as close as you're going to get to what like Flyers culture w- you know would be in the yeah. current in the current state of affairs. Oh, oh yeah. And then you do have, you know, you have Nick Delore if you do need some scraps and you know someone some toughness Even but Nick like Nick Sealer, he's a Seals, good yeah. Middleweight. Hathaway, you got yeah. some guy but the, but the grit is what you're you know, you know that, that Hathaway's to me a fighter like maybe I was a fighter. He's not really a fighter, but talk about grit, grit. and yeah. banging mm-hmm. and grinding. Yep. He's like a a Dornhofer kind of guy, if I look back. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a guy you want on your team. Yeah. And Deloria, you know, I don't think anybody would have wanted to fight him in any era. No, right? <laughs> Dude's just tougher than nails. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. So they got him if they need him. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, they're certainly trending in the right way. We talk about this all the time. Like, from the last two years to this year, like, as far as recapturing that flyer identity and just the essence of what the Flyers stand for. I think they've kind of found that. Well, what a job they've done, mm-hmm. you know, Danny Briere and, and, uh, coming in and, uh, and what he, he's, he paid his dues. He was he down in the minors yeah. and, uh, and he learned the game and he's coming in it, and Jonesy was, a, is a perfect compliment for him. I agree. And uh, Dan Hilford, he's a great leader. He, he led uh, Blue Cross, and he's leading the right way. He, he listens to them. And, uh, you know, the, I think that with Danny and Jonesy, Danny is a GM, so you got to – I give him credit for the courage he has to make the moves that he has. People are critical of things like, you know, could have he got more for Goche? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? Guess what? takes a lot of courage to do what he did yeah right because he felt this value is going to diminish over time i know what i can get now i'm making the decision i give him a lot of credit for that and and then for the morale the team spirit that has been built over that over the last couple years i think you got to give some credit back to danny and jonesy and hilferty for that yep and then and torts i mean uh Boy, they've created an environment where they're coming to play every night. I really hope they make the playoffs. I do too. You yeah, know, they, I think these kids have earned it. I, I'll be really disappointed if they don't because they're putting in the effort. Yeah. Yeah, they sure, sure are. Yeah. They're fun to watch, man. They yeah. Really are. Yeah. There's no give up in that team. Even when even when they lose a game by more than one or two goals, like they, they never stop playing. That's never right. stop. And they yeah. never stop. So. The last two games are indicative of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They, you just don't quit. Yeah. Riley and I were in Boston last weekend for uh, one of our sponsors, the fans of Philly, and we went up for for the game. And they got well, they were down three. They almost came. I mean, they almost came back in that game in the third period. They scored yeah. some late goals, and you're like, you're on the edge of your seat because they just never quit. They're not stopping, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. That's... Well, I, I watched a little bit. What R- Riley goes to bed early is how we go. Uh, yeah. Does he ever? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He he a... he stayed up that night. Yeah, he, I we stayed up. It. Yeah. We, even, we even waited post game. Saw some of the guys. And, uh, well, Jimmy, it was my birthday. It was my birthday. It was his birthday so I had, as well. Yeah. So he couldn't I had to go to stay bed up past ten. You know, yeah. <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> it was funny. He was like, he was so hungry. I'm like, you're gonna eat this late because he's so healthy. He usually doesn't eat too late. And he's like, I'm starving. And I, we get back to the. We stop by this. Uh, a bar with some friends of ours uh, right beside the hotel. And I was like, well, do you want to get to eat? No, nah, I'm going to go to bed. I don't need to eat now. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. But he had to get to bed. But yeah. we had an early flight, though, also. Yeah, but it was fun. Anyway, they, they just, to your point, they don't they don't give up and they play so hard. Really it's fun hard. to watch. Yep. Yeah, it yeah. So it would be interesting how this the next nine games go for them. Obviously, they're in a good spot. Goaltending has been a little bit of a, a question mark the last few games, but the but again, the, the resilience and, and, and the effort and the, f- the, the fight they have is, I mean, to me is contagious. And they're riding that way for sure. Yeah, yeah. these goalies got put in a tough spot. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you look at Harrison and, and what he was doing, he was supposed to be backing up mm-hmm. yeah. Hart. All of a sudden, he's number one. He's the guy, yeah. And uh, they have no experience That's right. coming in at this time of year when guys are, I'm sure you guys see the same thing I do that. The tempo of pay, play, the pace of play is really picked up this time right. of year. Mm-hmm. The intensity, sure does, and uh, and the way that people are banging at the nets, and and uh, and then 
you know, you throw in all the defensemen that got hurt. Yeah, yeah that's right. They got, they got kids that have never even, haven't yeah. been in the league for more than a dozen games. Yeah. <laughs> that are playing significant minutes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you put that on top of it, there's going to be breakdowns. Uh, in a way, I kind of feel bad for these kids, but I think they're stepping up. And I agree. And the Arison can have great nights. Yeah. You know what? Last night, um, you know, those Rangers goals, he, he doesn't let in bad ones. Right. And uh, what's amazing is the Flyers responded. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I know. Just five would, goals against the they, Rangers. because They would not go away. Yeah, like that's away. the top goalie in the league they're yep. shooting yeah, at. That's right. right. That's the truth. Yeah, so. it's not a bad time for these guys to get that experience though, right? I mean, it's like, what else are you going to do? Is you got to own it and embrace it and hopefully, you know, they can... And they're doing it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I'd like to see them just get into a round of playoffs for a lot. And, I mean, yeah, right. This guy's yeah. paid his dues, man. Yeah. And he's really playing. He plays hard. He he's does. playing real hard. Yeah, yeah hell um, of a goal last night, too. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, a great goal. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm impressed with uh, this Bobby Brink, the way he's been playing the last several games. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's undersized. Yeah. But he looks like his, he's got... Uh, strength in his lower body but the way that he his intensity for pursuing the puck and the way that he plays the body when he's going into the corners and still keeps his focus on the puck he's going in against a lot bigger guys and winning a lot of battles yeah Yeah. and he's got a high level of skill this kid yeah he does i just uh you know hope he continues finding his way because i think he's a talented kid yeah i agree for sure i think you know i think for him it's just um He's, they obviously believe in him. It's just the consistency thing, and he's kind of like maybe that fringe guy right now, but I think he's developed a ton oh, this year. Yeah. I mean, he keeps improving and looking yeah. more confident, I think, yeah. going into next year. He will, right. I mean, c- come back, you know, a little bit more confident, a little bit stronger, and probably earn that full-time it'd roster be, spot, I would think. It'd I mean, be good if he did. They've yeah. got a lot of good kids in the minors, too, yeah, that are right. in juniors coming up. Yeah. Um, it'll be nipping at the heels, which isn't a bad thing for a team. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have those uh, young guys in the minors pushing you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the, the future of the Flyers is bright. No, no question. I think they're they're back on track to yeah. be where they want to be. And so obviously, you know what I caution against is that you know you hope it's not. I thought, to me, I thought the Islanders were going to be way better this year than mm-hmm. they are. They're still not out of it. But what happens to a team? How do they make a good run? You know, I I can't put a finger on it because to me that team, I thought that team would be certainly in a playoff position. Um, I can understand Washington. They're making their last push, but they got a team that's kind of at their peak, I think, is past their peak probably. Right. And – but I thought the Islanders would be better. The Rangers are a big surprise. That team's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Good. I know. There's a lot of team. talent on that team. Yeah, yeah and Lavi, oh, Lavi always in his first year, boy, he gets he gets a lot out of his teams. You know, like he he is a fun. Like I really enjoy Peter. Yeah, Lavi. he's exciting, he was exciting here and, coach. Yeah. Uh, he always, he, he you know he's really good at speeches, but they were never the same. Right. That's what I thought was pretty unique about him. Like he always could switch it up and didn't really get old. He always had little things he did for yeah. you guys, and so I can imagine there, you know, in New York, yeah, and they seem to be responding. To They're him, responding. Yeah. What happens to him though? It seems like do players stop responding, or do the expectations from the owners get so high that they want to win right now? Because he winds up having a shorter sh- shelf life than I would expect. Because I agree with you. I think he's a great coach, right. but. His shelf life hasn't been that great. You yeah. know what's funny? When he got the job, they uh, Homer had to let our good buddy John Stevens go when he was a coach, and Lavi came in. And I remember the first day I met Lavi, he comes in, he goes, well, he goes, it should be a good three, three and a half years because that's about usually what I last. You know, like right. he was kidding, yeah. but it was yeah. about yeah. exactly three and a half years. And yeah. that's a great question, Bert, because right. I, I don't I don't really know. Maybe, Riley, you you know, you played for him. Yeah, I can't say for sure, but I, what I will say is that he comes in and he and he just kind of opens up the gates for all these offensive players to, to play an offensive game and not worrying about, like, making mistakes and playing that rigid, like, yeah. overly structured offensive style game. So he gives these guys the freedom – 
to make to make plays that maybe other coaches maybe were a little bit more stringent on um so i think like opening that up these guys have success early they're, they're scoring more goals they're you know they're feeling the flow but eventually like like that lands up you know there's there's like there's, there's no room after that for growth besides just like what what you got so i think maybe that just like levels off and then you know like there's not much more yeah. room for growth, but I, I would say like when he came to the Flyers, like I mean, I, c I can't tell you how many like ozone drills we did were just like make plays, like just you know just like finding different ways to attack the net. And, and I remember you know Danny B and you know, these guys are excited, you know, right, like, yeah. wow, like we can actually like do this the way you know be creative, top of the circles in, and but eventually like that becomes your your style, and then there's nothing like new and exciting anymore because that's that, 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 that would be all the only thing i can think of yeah, well that's true and the other teams are all watching they're right. watching video so they pick up on the tendencies and that's so true. you learn how to play against guys except nobody we were talking about that before we got on the air yeah nobody's learned how to cover ovechkin yeah. off of that side i don't know <laughs> yeah. what the hell that deal is i, know. I mean you know he's standing there yeah. and yeah. he's gonna drill it <laughs> the, right i mean every power play meeting well, is around like circling number eight yeah you know, like if puck's going through this guy like. a few a few years ago when we like to your point they were a little younger and they were every year they were at least in the playoffs they had a healthy backstrom you got tj right. oshi in that yes, slot right. so oh, if you're true. overplaying and then you got johnny carlson up top who yeah. can hammer it right right so yep. he, I guess you pick your pick poison, your poison there, but that. like Ovi, I, I've said this before, Bird. Like where I was on the bench for years is Ovi's side at home when we're when we're at right. the center, and you just see that. But he's just standing there. He doesn't. He really he doesn't, move. Move. doesn't he move. He stands there, and then but when he lets that thing go, you really can't even see it. For, I mean, it's a perfect angle, but I. I've said before, I remember Nick Schultz used to slide over and I'd be like, oh, I'd just be praying. Because Schultz, you know, like yeah, he's just fearless. putting his face, body right in front of it. I Ugh. just remember going, oh, my God. But this shot, you either heard it hit the net or the glass. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> or right. see a guy laying on the ground because yeah. he got hit by the shot. Uh, you got to have balls to block that thing. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I think I even like going back to like some of the power play meetings I used to sit in because I certainly wasn't on it. But like <laughs> I sat in all these meetings, it would, you know, it would be like there's sometimes we would like, like, like obviously cheat to Ovechkin, but then like to your to your point, you, there's other options. So you cheat to him, and then it's going to at yeah, that time maybe Salmon or Backstrom, and they got some other shooters. Guys. Backstrom's yeah. done, right? I mean, he I, he, I see, he was there the other night, but I don't think I. Definitely think he's done now. Remember, he was hurt last year yeah. when we went down to see them. Mm -hmm. um, he did end up playing a few games, but I think he's done. Yeah, he's, he's a talented done. guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, he was. He was a prick too. He was actually a. Was he really? Yeah, he really was. He was a dirty. Yeah, a little dirty a behind dirty, the play. Yeah, behind. I the play. always thought he was like he looked like an angel out there, <laughs> like he was one of these nice, clean was, hockey players. Was, I remember we had Belly. Remember uh, we had uh, Belmar uh, here and. No one. Know, he's from France, but he speak. He played in Sweden forever, so he he speaks Swede. And uh, and he said something to back because Backstrom kind of gave him a poke, and then uh, Belly said something to him in Swede, and he like turned and looked at him, and you know, was like what? And then they started going back and forth, and he goes, he goes, he's a dirty fucker. That's what I told him. Like, You're saying, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But losing him probably didn't help. No, you know, obviously not. it didn't help. But no nope. their power play, but. Um, Anyway, I had a question you a minute ago. You're talking about the American League and, and this, those guys. Your your first year when uh, I think you were in Quebec, uh, and uh, I just wondered. I don't know how the game was in junior back then, but like, so you come, you you play pro. Uh, Billy Clement was on your team. I think he was like the leading scorer. And yep. you had Hammer, uh, Dave Schultz. He had 382 minutes. Were you just like what? what the fuck is going on here? Or was it, <laughs> were you, was the game kind of like that? And there were guys like that in junior hockey. I mean, you're turning pro, you're still a kid. Well, Schultz played in the East coast league. And, uh, the year that I got drafted, uh, the same year as Schultz, he, uh, Keith Allen called us in the last day of training camp. And he said, oh, I got an opportunity for you guys. Um, I want you to go to the East coast league to Roanoke. And, uh, and I said, uh, thanks, Keith, but I'm going back home. I'll, uh, you know, I'll just go yeah. back to college. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get my law degree. So I said, I'll just go back and quit hockey and go to school. I'll play senior hockey. And if something changes, uh, I'll come back here. But Schultz, he went to Roanoke. And that's where, that was a goon league, man. And uh, 
it was uh, every night was fight night. And Schultz went from being you know a high scorer in in uh, junior to defending himself and. I guess he found out that he was good at Pretty fighting. <laughs> yeah. And so he came out of that East Coast League, and then we went to Quebec that next year. And he was fighting every night. He had Eddie Bush uh, was our coach back then. And he came into the dressing room one day, and he says, he said, you guys, you and Slesky, you and Schultz, you're fucking crazy. He <laughs> says, you know, every time somebody looks at you, all you want to do is fight them. You think that you got to retaliate. He says, I kept a black book. And he said, I wrote down everybody's name, and I just kept uh, I kept tabs on them. He said, I'm still looking for some of those pricks. <laughs> <laughs> said, but but uh, Schultz, he was, that's when he started it. He's, he fought everybody. Yeah. And the, there were some tough guys. It's, oh, no doubt. And what's interesting about Schultz, too, is you know that he wasn't a fighter before. No. He'd never been in a fight off the ice. Yeah. I mean, not probably maybe a junior, probably a, a handful. He's, but to kind of become the hammer and essentially the the original Broad Street bully, I guess, yeah. right? I mean... Yeah, yeah. before he was married, we were back believe. in Saskatchewan. This is before his reputation and all mm-hmm. this. And uh, we were out at a bar one night, and he was with his... Who was then his fiance, And uh, some guys started hitting on her, and Schultz, he was just sitting there. And finally, I got up and I said, Hey, dude, why don't you just take a hike? Yeah. But... Schultz, to your point, he's never been in a fight off the ice. But I'll tell you what, he could throw him on the ice. Yeah, he could. All balance. And he was always willing to take a couple punches Mm -hmm. to get set. That was his whole thing. And, man, he could take a punch like... I I couldn't believe some of the punches he'd take from guys like Terry O'Reilly that, you know, would have knocked me out. But he'd just take it, get set. And then come back. Yeah. Oof. Guns are blazing. Tougher than nails. Yeah, right? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how, yeah. like, you know, to, to, see, to see someone like that, you think, like, this guy, I've been fighting his whole life, and then to hear, like, you know, talk about, like, owning a role Whew. and, well, almost creating the role, right? I mean, I guess you could say in some way, shape, or form. He really did. He yeah. created. I guess there was, like, John Ferguson Couple before guys, him and yeah. a few guys, but... Nobody like Schultz. He no. created that was an identity he created. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, talk about your uh, your incident in 1976. There, your, uh, what did I do? I, I don't know. I think there might have been I a don't little, think he little, did little altercation in the penalty box. I don't know. Someone well, grabbing your stick. I saw the so, video. You know what? <laughs> oh, there's a few times. One was in '76. That was in Toronto, yeah, right? In Toronto mm-hmm. in the playoffs and. Uh, you know, there never used to be any glass anywhere. And uh, I was sitting on the uh, in the penalty box, and some guy came by and grabbed my stick and started going off with it. I, <laughs> so I went nuts, and there was no glass. <laughs> so nuts. I went after the guy. And, uh, and, you know, then a brawl started on the ice. I wasn't even on the ice. And the next thing I know, you know, I'm indicted with Mel Bridgman and Joe Watson and other people, um, and uh, in all kinds of trouble and charged with uh, assault and all this other kind of stuff. And we kind of, eventually, it, you know, I think the charges got dropped down to something causing a disturbance or something. Yeah. And, you know, then the other one was in, in Vancouver where we're, in a brawl on the ice and and uh some guy reached over fan reached over and grabbed my hair and was pulling my hair and it was right beside our bench so our whole team jumped into the stands (laughs) and uh and then from that one i got charged with assault i was the only guy on the team that wasn't in the stands and then (laughs) and then uh, you know, Barry Ashby, Joe Watson, uh, Bob Taylor, and She's Bill Flett. Mix. <laughs> and we're all, we had to go to uh, Vancouver and spend like, we were there for a couple of weeks in the summer in court for it. Oh, and it really? was kind of wow. serious stuff. Eventually they let us off. Bob Taylor had the worst one because 
in, in the brawl in the stands, somebody grabbed him by the shoulder and he turned around and he hit the guy oh, wow. and nailed him right in the face and it was a cop. Oh. So he, he he had the scariest oh. rap of all of them. Oh, but uh, so, you know, there was just, uh, I, I blame circumstances. I was always a victim. Yeah, yeah. Never, <laughs> of course you were. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I never did anything. A little, yeah, a little different animal. I yeah. guess you got to put the glass up. Hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like a good decision. Can you imagine <laughs> someone kind of just grabbing your stick, though? Like, no, I know. I would have snapped. Yeah, it, well, well anybody would. And then the guy that grabbed my hair, he, you know, they had him in court, and he said, I thought he was going to kill this guy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, good defense, um, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh, too, I mean, too, you mentioned you're going back to school or potentially going back to school for a law degree. I mean, you're pretty... I feel pretty inadequate, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. He's sitting here at Wharton Business School. Yeah, no, no. He's taking courses in while you're playing junior hockey. <laughs> you took courses at Vill- Villanova as well, right? Right, yeah. And then Never did War- get a degree, though. Wharton, no. no. Yeah, but this, yeah. I'm afraid my... <laughs> My English may be off or something. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> smart like mess with you. Yeah, but you mean, I mean, obviously, you poured a ton of work into business, with or without degree, but like, yeah, yeah. successful post career too. I mean, uh, you talk about that because I think that's pretty inspiring for. Well, you know, when I retired, I was um, out in Colorado, and I had one year left on my contract, and and uh, they wanted me to go be a player coach in Fort Worth, Texas. And I just said to my wife, no, I'm not going to do that. So I said, Some, I'm, you know, I'm going to retire after that. i got to figure out what I'm going to do the rest of my life. And so I started looking around um, for a job. And Ed Snyder knew some folks at Aramark. And he introduced me to them. And uh, I got a job uh, in sales with Aramark. And I guess in retrospect, the best thing that I've Ever, my best decision was I stayed with Aramark for close to 19 years and uh, started off in sales and ended up as a an area president. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest accomplishments was when I started off in school and in, uh, in sales, I would look at, uh, and I had so much respect for the guy that was president and had the, the corner office. When I left, that was my office. No way. Uh, That's you know, awesome. But, uh, I, you know, with Aramark, it was, it was humbling, but it, it takes the same kind of attributes uh, to be successful in business as, you know, as in sports or in, in hockey in their case. And, uh, you know, I, I applied the same kind of, you know, being disciplined, taking responsibility, always having integrity, persevering. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started with Airmark, I remember I did a training program before I could start sales. I, you know, had to learn something about the business. So they had me go out and and I was uh, working a vending route and I was filling vending machines. And I was at Prudential Fort Washington and I was filling the machines and paying attention to what I was doing and learning, you know, that aspect of the business. And uh, I hear two guys that are outside, two Prudential employees. One guy says to the other, see that guy in there? That's Don Seleski. He used to play for the Flyers. That's the only job he can get. Oh, <laughs> So, wow. you know, it's humbling, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I worked in cafeterias uh, before I started in sales. And... Uh, and spent time doing everything, working uh, in prep, working uh, wash of dishes. So I learned the business from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I started in sales, and I, I had success, and I, I recognized it and kept getting promotions and uh, wound up being there for 20 years. Great company, yeah. can't say. And I loved my time at Aramark. Aramark was a uh, perfect place because it was kind of like the Flyers. It was a, a great family. We were building a business. Uh, we did a lot of great things. Um, we had uh, we took the company private when I was there, and I was part of the first group that uh, as we went private. And so, uh, you know, that was something that uh, Joe Newbar, who was the CEO, didn't need to do. So that that was very helpful for me. Um, so that's 
that's a long time. It's been 50 years. So, I, you know, from there, I, I ran a software company called Club Systems Group for a while. And it was just a roll up. So we wound up selling it and I left that. And then I started a business in healthcare with a friend of mine. I started doing sales and marketing consulting and, and, uh, I started, uh, doing some, uh, consulting with him and, and, uh, he said, look, you know, let's grow this business together. So I joined him and the other partner and we wound up, uh, from, uh, from a real small company having one client here in the Philadelphia area to when we sold the business, we had, uh, every hospital in the, wow. in the entire Delaware Valley. Oh, wow. So, uh, wow. you know, we, we built a successful company. We sold it at a good time right before COVID. Oh, oh and, yeah, uh, that's good. And so now I still have a partnership. I have a joint venture with, uh, Virtua Health. It's a, another great organization. I'm blessed in life that I wind up, uh, for whatever reason, aligning myself with uh, great organizations and great companies and yeah. and good business people. When I look back at success in life and success in 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 hockey, my success in life is the same way. I I don't I've never thought that I was um, anything. I, I never thought like I did anything that was. I was special, like I had any special talents. Uh, but I always believed that I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by good people mm -hmm. and work yeah. with good people. And just like on the Flyers, we had a great hockey team. We had, you know, Clarkie's leadership when we had McLeish and Dornhofer and Leach and Barber and, you know, we can, Bernie Perrant, we can go down the list. Mm -hmm being fortunate enough to be in the right place and be around good people and recognize it. And the same thing was in business. My success in life has been due to the other people, people I've surrounded myself with. Yeah. And I, I'm a believer that, you know, if you find good people, uh, you support them, you educate them, and you let them do their job. And uh, you know what? It's always, uh, and keeping an open mind. I always feel that a lot of the times the differences in business, you know, there's different ways that you can accomplish the same goal. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of the times you find that uh, people get so stuck in, this is the way I want to do it, and don't spend the time to sit back and think and listen to the alternative mm -hmm. and, and someone else's suggestion and in that way, build up that person and uh, and be respectful of them and, you know, either let them do it the way they want to or if they, if you think your way is the right way, tell them why and we're, I respect what you're saying, but we're not going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so other people around you breed success. I, yeah, there's, I follow um, a, a mantra and I've, I'm kind of building... Um, thoughts out about it right now but when I reflect at life I I think that uh, what are the attributes that can lead to success and to me it start everything starts with discipline mm -hmm. and then you know responsibility follows right behind it and too many people don't want to accept responsibility if you're going to do something if I'm going to be successful it's it's really up to me they blame circumstances sure. they do all kinds of things yeah. around them and then in and having integrity in what you're doing what you do and what you say are the same thing and doing it consistently and then you know perseverance is a big one you you know you're going to get knocks in life you're going to fall down but you got to get up you got to keep going you know you got to keep your that discipline that got you there, yeah, and you got to right. persevere through the hard times. And they're not all good times. There's a lot more hard times than there are good times. That's the truth. And you know, we talk about it in, in sports all the time. Never get too high. Never get too low. Keep an even keel and keep yourself focused. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, that's great advice. And you mentioned earlier, like when you when you first got it with the Aramark, you were essentially doing the grunt work, right? I mean, like people talk about discipline and like the perseverance. Like a lot of people just see the success, they see the top of the mountain, right? They don't see like the the foundation that you've laid and all that. 
the Dude. ugly work that you have to do, right? It takes a long it time. It takes a to long get there, time, yeah. right? It's, it's like, the same in anything, anything in life. It right? takes a while. People want a shortcut. That's it. And you know, I talk about it when I'm, you know, with business development and, and uh, when I'm talking to kids that are starting their own business or developing their own business, that uh, there's steps to follow to be successful. And they're very disciplined. And whatever you're doing, and, you know, you take uh, in the sales process, there's a series of steps. And I do some education and teaching on this to, to folks that are willing to listen. But when we get in trouble is when you shortcut. You yeah. can't shortcut the steps. Yeah. You miss a step, you wind up wondering, why wasn't I successful? Why didn't I have the outcome? And it's the same with everything in life. There's, there's discipline. It's got to be applied in steps and a process to everything. Yeah. Yeah, I agree fully. And I think like the younger age, <clears throat> you, you know, the kids these days, yeah. younger generation now, just like to your point, it's like everything seems to be, how do we find a shortcut? Yep. And, you know, this technology and AI and all this, these, these, these tools, but there's really still no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. There's you no. still got to apply the same discipline. You do. That's why I like torts. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's no shortcuts. No. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That is true. There's no shortcuts with torts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as yeah, as old school as he is, like nothing really has changed, right? It's like there's still yeah. the standard of play. There's just, this is how we how we're gonna approach the game and this is my expectation and anything else is not good enough. And you know what? Nothing has changed with that, but he's actually tempered his style just a hair he has, yep. with the players. Because he realizes that there's a new breed of guys, yeah. but he still has the same expectation. He hasn't changed his expectation. That's right. Right. I, I really I admire that. To I, I'm really hopeful that he can see the continued progress in these guys next year and keep them playing at the same level. Because to me, he's earned it. You yep. know. Yeah. And he he's earned that the players should respect him. And I think he's got the right kind of guys. He's got, you know, when I look at guys like Konecki, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, these these are their, and Lawton. These are their leaders. Uh, Sealer. Yeah. These are grind guys. These are guys that are hardworking and respect work ethic like that. Yeah. So got the right leadership true. yeah, yeah i sure. agree and to your point with torts like the reason why he's still in the nhl coaching is he, he's, he's been able to evolve emotionally yep. or whatever you know because that old school coach of like not talking to your players or the threatening of sending you to the minors all this stuff don't work anymore don't work you have to communicate yeah but the you said the expectation the standard hasn't changed but you just have to be able to you know be able to connect with your players right yeah. i mean that's yeah. the only thing that's really changing. That's why he's still coaching. That's why he's still coaching. Because a lot of those old school guys are no longer around because that type of coaching doesn't really exist anymore in any sport. Right? No, it's uh, it's that's a dying breed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you brought up Colorado there last year. Uh, Don Cherry was your coach? Yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> he was awesome. Yeah. Was he awesome? Was he? Don Cherry? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love it. I just yeah. wonder how he was like. Don Cherry and I never got along. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Okay. No. He's um, he's he's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm not shocked. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd been playing for, you know, Freddie Shiro. And yeah, right. Pat Quinn and, and you know, guys that were respectful players. And, and uh, you know, Freddie Shiro, would, he was not a yeller. If he had an issue, he'd bring you into his into his office and he'd talk to you about it and uh you know he'd deliver messages but he'd deliver it to the whole team you know I'll, I'll talk a little bit about cherry but i'll come back after i talk about shiro you know shiro was the kind of guy that we were playing against toronto one year in the playoffs in toronto they had a good hockey team they had sittler and lanny mcdonald and borgie salming and all these guys and they were up on uh, on us and we were back in philly and and uh, Freddie would always come out and he'd talk about the lines. The lines were always the same. Uh, starting goaltender was always the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so he'd come out and he'd uh, talk about that stuff. And he came out uh, during the uh, after warm up and put a bucket of water on the table and he left. And he never came out and the bell rang. And so 
you know, three minutes to go on the ice. Clark, he says, well, we better get ready. And, um, and uh, Freddie still hadn't come out. And, you know, at that time, his reputation, Freddie the Frog, was pretty well broadly, you know, yeah. w- known. And so Freddie came out just before we were going on the ice, and he, he went over, he said to uh, Ricky McLeish, Ricky, come over here. And uh, and talk, this is about delivering a message to the entire team, not just the one guy. Right. And he says, Ricky, roll up your sleeve. He rolled up his sleeve, and he said, stick your hand in that bucket of water. He put his hand in, he says, now pull it out. He pulled it out. He said, see the hole that's left? And Ricky says, Freddie, there ain't no hole there. He said, well, that's how much we'll miss you when you're gone. Wow. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was one of the best messages I've ever. Wow. I mean, it's, that, and we knew it was to all of us. Right. You know, what? Right. it was not like to any one guy. Wow. But that was Freddie's. Freddie was a master. Jeez. Um, so then Don Cherry, he was a nut. <laughs> that's what I, I mean. Was... You see him on TV. Yeah, well, oh, that's yeah. what I mean. He makes I mean, me laugh when I see and, this yeah, guy's and, crazy. You know, um, I, I had enough of it. I played in the, you know, for good teams and good coaches. And and I was on the bench one time. We were playing against somebody, and he was screaming at the guys. You, and we had a young team in Colorado. Oh, wow. We were bad. We were as bad as they get. And, uh, and he was screaming at guys, you yellow mother, every, oh, you know, and just relentlessly this one night. He was going nuts. And I turned around, and I said, uh, Hey, Don, he looked at me. I said, why don't you shut the fuck up? He said, what? (laughs) I said, you heard me. I said, shut up. Yeah. And he came flying across the bench. No way. And guys got in between us. And uh, and then we went into the dressing room. Uh, It was near the end of the period. And we went into the dressing room. He came flying across at me. And he stood up to swing. I put up my arm. And then some guys got in between us. And that wow. was the end of our relationship. No what way. A wow. story. Wow. Did not expect that. I didn't expect that. I knew you were going to probably say he was nuts, but yeah. I didn't. Do you wish you would have got one in? <laughs> <laughs> Just one? Oh, Ask man. him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's I, crazy. I can see him being completely, well, you watch completely it. That's what unhinged. I meant. Like, he was yeah. bonkers. Yeah, bonkers. Yeah. He was bonkers. Just a show. Just a and, show. And, you know, he had a team in Boston. That team was tougher than nails. I mm-hmm. mean, that that team, you know, with the guys they had on that team. And then going to us in Colorado, we had a bunch of kids that, you know, shouldn't have even been in the league at that point. It wow. was a bad hockey team. And uh, he couldn't take it. Yeah. He lost it real early. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's wild. Was, probably, I, guess, <laughs> I guess his coaching career probably didn't last much longer than that. And then he, got he was gone media. at the end of that year. At the end of the oh, year. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, it's gotta be miserable. I, I had a couple. I, I did want to. I want to ask you about the uh, cups. First of all, you you win back to back. Did you? Were you like, oh, this is easy. We're gonna win every year. <laughs> I'm kidding. But this, this is the way it goes. It's, it, yeah, yeah right. like it's crazy. I'm the catalyst. But, but yeah. Uh, yeah. what what that first uh, the first Stanley Cup you won uh, against Boston? What what stood out to you the most about that team and and just the year and winning it? Well, you know what the. I go back to the year before we were playing Minnesota uh, in the in, in the playoffs, and uh, and we lost in the first round, I think. And uh, I went back home that summer, and it was at my it was my brother's wedding, I think. And uh, we went uh, to some friends of mine. We're sitting around the table with some uh, of my uh, parents' peers guys that I admired and grew up with that were hockey coaches of mine. And I said, and I said, uh, they said, you had a pretty good year, Donnie. I said, yeah, we did. He said, uh, what do you think? I said, we're going to win the cup next year. Mm, they uh-huh. said, there's no way. You guys aren't going to win the cup. And we really believed it. Yeah. We, we thought we were uh, that good. And, you know, Bernie was amazing. Clarkie was such a leader. And then, you know, when you look at our lines, it was Bill Flett that first year, Clarkie and Barber, Dornhofer, Lonsberry, McLeish. Um, then our third line with me and Kinderchuk and, and Schultz and Crisp and Kelly. 
I mean, it's a deep team. Yeah. And we had a solid, solid defense. Right. Um, and uh, a good blend of some young guys and some older guys. So w- we thought we were going to win. Now, you know, it wasn't easy, but we, you know, knew it was going to be battles. But we we had a, uh, Clark used to say that his biggest fear was, uh, he never thought about winning. His biggest fear was losing. Hmm. And we just didn't want to lose. Right. And uh, and then when we won that game in, in Boston, we'd never won in Boston before. That's right. And then Schultz, he scores. I mean, that was yeah, that was foretelling. Yeah. yeah. Schultz, he scores that goal. Okay, yeah, we're good to go now. That's yeah. destiny. <laughs> and uh, then when we came back to Philly, there was probably seven minutes less th- left in the game. And uh, I was uh, coming on the ice, and Esposito was changing. And he said, uh, he said to me, we're not going to score on that guy tonight. Wow. And uh, so we were in their head. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then it all comes together um, that uh, when it happens and you, it's like it takes a while to sink in. It's like because you dream about it. You watch it when you're a kid growing up. Right. Riley knows yeah, that. Oh, yeah. You're watching these guys winning the Stanley Cup would be like something you would dream about, but can't really dream about because it's not going to ever happen. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then you win it. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> we did it. Yeah, we actually won. So it's like, uh, you know, a lot of memories. And Freddie, you know, is win today, we'll walk together forever. Guess what? These guys, we know each other to this day. Yeah. We know how each other thinks. We have a respect for each other. Um, we can. We don't have to see each other for years, and when we do, it's like we never were apart. It's, right ama- it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's a lot of teams. When you win, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. That's funny. Uh, talking, you're touching on Freddie a minute ago. I've, I've heard so many cool stories over the years, like you know my dad being with the team and just just everybody talking about him. But Joe Joe Watson was on with us a few weeks ago, and it was funny when he said he picks up the paper in Boston. You guys are going before game one, and the headlines. What did the headlines say? Uh, this team's going to be our last uh, series will be way harder than this one. And he thinks it's Boston, but he reads it's Freddie Shiro. He says, "Yeah, I got to get in their head or something." Yeah. To that. Yeah, and yeah. He goes, "What are you doing?" And, you know, Joe's so yeah. animated. <laughs> the way he said it was just pretty funny. Oh God, yeah, that's yeah. like. Uh, you didn't need to get in those guys' heads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Lay low, Freddie. <laughs> yeah. Lay low. Oh, that's uh, awesome. That is crazy. You know, the funniest was uh, right before that, near the end of the year, we had a game in Boston, a final game, and, uh, and you know, everybody was looking at that as a big game, and Freddie played Bobby Taylor. <laughs> and he, the reporters asked him why. He says, because it was his turn. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've heard that's awesome. Uh, it's his turn. Oh, it's man. his turn. Oh. He played five games all year. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, <laughs> so his turn. Yeah. That's great. Oh, that's classic. And then the next year you win it again. Yeah. I mean, is that, yeah. is that, that, that feeling carried over? Did you guys think the feeling same? carried over. Yeah. We got Reggie Leach, you know, right. and, yeah. and uh, Flett was gone. But the same team in place. Mm-hmm. Bernie was still Bernie. And... Uh, and you know, I think that we felt we felt confident that we had a shot. Um, our threat was Montreal. Thank God Buffalo plays Montreal. And they beat, knocked them out. When we were playing, I th- I think we were pretty confident that we'd beat Buffalo when we got to the finals that year. Yeah, you know that was not a. Uh, um, we kind of we had their number. We knew how to play them. We knew how to shut down their big line. So, yeah, um, Montreal was a different dynamic. We met them the next year. We didn't have Bernie, right? That's right. Which is a game changer. <clears throat> Wayne Stevenson's a great goaltender. He was really a good number two, but he wasn't Bernie. And that Montreal team was a powerhouse. Yeah, right. they went on to win several Stanley yeah, Cups. Right. So, you know, not having Bernie hurt us. And when, then we had injuries. We had like. Uh, McLeish was hurt. Dorney got hurt. Uh, we had a lot of injuries that year too. So it gets tougher. Yep. You know, yeah. once you climb that mountain, it gets tough to stay. And and Montreal was coming after us. Yeah. And, 
Yeah, well, pr- pretty impressive run. I yeah. Mean, geez. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, but it's, it's 50 dynasty. years. It's too long, man. Yeah, it's time, yeah, yeah, it's time to get another one. We time, need one but... in Philadelphia, I'll tell you what. I, yeah. yeah. I, wait a minute. Dude, I'm 74. I we got to get one before I'm gone. I, you know, <laughs> they got, I don't know how many good years I got left. Oh, I want to see them win a cup. You look great. I think yeah. you got plenty <laughs> you got left. At least 25 here. left. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure you do. We're going to get one by uh, Yeah. Don't no, say that. Good. we got to get one way before. <laughs> oh, no, wait, no, we're talking about the years you have left. Yeah, 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 we'll get yeah. one before that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like, I mean, I don't know what the process looks like in the next few years, but, I mean, I, I feel like they're trending towards. They're moving the they're right moving direction. They're moving the right direction. Yeah, exactly, which. And you got to have every, things fall into you place, do. and you, you got to not get injuries. And, That's right. You know, a lot of stuff has a to go into yeah. A lot of yeah. luck. Not a yeah. good fortune. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's right. People really don't realize how much of a grind it really is. But then to your point, like, you, you have to stay healthy. You got to have yeah. a few things that work in your that favor. That happen. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's good energy right now in the city. I mean, down the stretch here. I mean, I'd like to see, obviously, the Flyers get in and keep this energy going because it's, it's been a great year all around. I mean, yeah. the, the, the fans are back, you know, like the, the energy's back. It's awesome. Yeah, you know, I just, I hope that they can, uh, I hope they uh, can get into the playoffs. I really yeah. wish them well here in the next eight, nine games. Yeah. I, I was talking to Danny on Monday, and I'm like, you guys are grinding, man. It's going to be a push, but hopefully you get it. He's like, I just want these kids to get in and get a taste of this. Yeah. What a so, great experience. You know, yeah, that's no doubt. what he was well, saying. Well, you know, forget the taste. Mm-hmm. If they get in, I don't think Florida or the Rangers want to play them. I, in the first I would round. Who wants to? Yeah. I would not. You want to play them in the first team. round? No, no, hell no. The way they're playing? No. And you, they're going to play harder. Yeah, that's it. They will. They're a dangerous team in that first round. Yeah. They yeah, are. I agree. You just get in, like, you know, like, anything could happen, right? I mean, my last year in 2010, we make the playoffs last game of the, the right. season in a shootout. Yeah. And, you know, you have the Two push, you know, that, that push we had, right? That was I mean, one of the best. That was yeah, one of the insane. best years. I yeah. love that. Great. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, he's, who knows? I mean, you get in with with that type of attitude and resilience. I mean, they're playing a very structured yeah. You know, a high intensity game, I and mean, that's they're built for the playoffs. So who knows? I love the way the defense moves in on the play. Yeah, and and if you notice lately how, you know, they get the puck in deep and how they rotate the puck, and there's it's almost like there's two guys on the puck all the time mm-hmm. deep. Yeah, and and they're rotating well, and the intensity level's really there, and they're back checking, they're picking up the off wings. Yeah. Um, the guys in the open. So let's hope they keep doing it all right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, and it's going to, it's harder mentally not to, uh, not to, uh, to keep, uh, to keep yourself up mentally. You got to hope they don't have a drop off against Montreal because, you know, it's just, uh, the tendency is yeah. that you don't let it creep in that you're going to have an easier game because it ain't going right. to be easier is my point. Right. That's it's going right. to be hard, man. It, that's true. right. And do they play Ottawa again? Not Ottawa, but uh, they do play Jersey, Wash, Islanders. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so I think out of the nine games, eight of them are on, on teams uh, are lower they're than them. Yeah, chasing, so Rangers yeah. are the only team. So, yeah, I mean. But those aren't easy games. Like you're saying, not easy games. That's, they're not easy no. games. There's no gimmies there's there, not, man. There's no, no, no gimmies. No. And, you know, not. these teams are going to, you know, well, they don't like the Flyers, fight. and they're yeah. going to, you know, they want to spoil the season, right? I mean, how those, those games go. You know, goes. if you're going to make the playoffs – there's nothing better than ruining somebody else's playoff chances. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is right. totally. horrible, right? But yeah, it's the but truth. It's the truth. truth. Well, Knock them out. For? They, yeah. they, they got to earn it. You got to earn it. That's right. Yeah, it'll be a dogfight. It's going to be a dogfight. Mm-hmm. Um, one other thing I, I was uh, reading about, too, and I, I didn't know this. Um, you did color on the radio for like five years or so in van? Yeah, when I retired. Did you, did you, did you enjoy that? Yeah, I liked it. It was uh, it was good. It was a good transition for me. Yeah, um, I was um, working with Airmark, so it still kept my name out. Oh, okay. And, and I was uh, at that point, my uh, sales market was in this area, so it kept my name in front of folks. Okay, which was really helpful. Good strategy. For my transition. Yeah, yeah. 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 and uh, and and I enjoyed it. But then I um, 
I was uh, promoted and I got a national sales job where I was, I moved into uh, the uh, arena stadium and convention oh, okay. center business. Mm -hmm. So I was traveling nationally and I just didn't have the time to do it. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it was fun. Yeah. yeah. It was a good yeah, time. Kept you in the game too, right? Yeah. Like, kept you close yeah, to the that's game. Cool. It's a great thing when it, in a transition, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never thought of it as a career, but yeah. I wasn't that good at it. You weren't good at it, so you oh, said. I, I wasn't that good. I didn't think I was that good at it, you know. It's, well, you, five years, you must have been doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't fire me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right? what I mean. You must have been doing okay. That's right. Um, I was going to uh, ask you about January 17th. You had a pretty special night at the um, Sports Writers Association Banquet. Oh, yeah, with, yeah. With uh, three, three generations. Uh, your son was coaching a baseball team, your grandson played, and they, yeah. they got a big award. you want to talk about that for a sec? I'll tell you what, that was uh, so cool. We, uh, you know, my grandson, for people that may not be aware, went to the World League Little Series, yes. and they won the uh, Northeast uh, or the Mid-Atlantic region. And, uh, and going to Williamsport uh, and watching him play, in front of 25,000 people. Wow. I said to him, Nate, you know, I've never played in front of a crowd that big. Wow. The biggest crowd I played in was maybe at Montreal Forum, 20,000, 21,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, how did it feel? And it's amazing how these kids just grew into it. So he was honored at the Philadelphia Sports Writers Banquet as the team of the year, and they were recognizing us for the 50 years since we won the cup. And my son was uh, assistant coach on the team. So we had all three generations, my son, Adam, and my grandson, Nate. And uh, and what a great experience that was. We went up to Williamsport for a couple of weeks. And uh, it was like, uh, I had tears in my eyes the oh, whole time. Bad. Yeah, it was the most emotional thing. It was more emotional than... Truthfully, I mean, winning the cup was the biggest thing that ever happened in my life. But from an emotional perspective, watching my grandson play in the World Series, I, I get teared up. Yeah, I, I can imagine. It was so cool. Uh, that's, Great experience. that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, play, you imagine being that age. Those kids, yeah, that's they're insane. still babies. Yeah, I mean, really. Like my son's age. Yeah, and that many people. <laughs> like, well, you insane. know, 25,000 people. And when they won the States, uh, they went up to. Uh, uh, Bridgeton, uh, yeah, Bridgeton, Connecticut, where was the Northeast uh, and the Mid-Atlantic Regionals were. And they went up to a dorm. And so these kids, most of them had never been away from home other than the sleepover. So they were in a dorm up there for 10 days. Wow. And then when they won there, they got on a bus and went right to Williamsport for two weeks in dorms. Wow. So they were, they went from being little kids at home to watching them on national TV speaking better than I could. Yeah, yeah you know, right. Like, They're like major happened? leaguers yeah, all of a sudden, right. you know? Right. What, <laughs> these crazy. Kids Talk come about maturing from? in a short amount of time. I mean, what an experience for a kid to get to do that. That's They grew a lot. Yeah, I that's, bet. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's it's really cool. I, yeah, I read that. I thought that was really cool. That all, you know, three generations. Yeah, that's, that's really pretty neat. Yeah. Pretty neat. Well, Don, we appreciate you hopping on and making the trek over here. Yep. So it was fun. Sharing some insights. Yeah. Just make it easy. Yeah. Try to have some fun and yeah. let it flow. Yeah, yeah. See if we can get some views. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Right? <laughs> Jack it up. As long as Don Cherry doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll make sure we send it or ta tag him in his little I kinda wish. Feed. I kind of wish you would have got one in. I know. <laughs> great Just story. Just for you or not. Uh, no, but that's great. We do appreciate your time. You're, yeah. you're awesome, Thanks. man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Big thank you to Big Bird, Don yes. Zaleski. Good dude. Yeah, man. good dude. Great, great Don, stories. Don Cherry. Don Cherry. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Broad Street Bullies, Stanley Cup champs, two twice, twice. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep, yep. So great guy, smart man. Yeah, he smart is smart man. Yeah, nice to see. Uh, you know, nice success story. Yeah, on the for back sure. end of his career and kind of like learning what he did, you know, using what he learned from his hockey career. Yeah. And, applying that to business and this is essentially the same ingredients as it takes to become a pro hockey yep. player to business so appreciate him making the track and stew yep. it was awesome yeah. awesome to have him Great thanks guy. don appreciate yep. you 
And it is that time. Now? Like right now. Baller. Is it? He gave me his thumbs up. Oh, yeah. He's not talking today. No, no. It's time for Clear Room Questions. The Clear Room Questions brought to you by ClearRoom.com. Go to ClearRoom.com slash shop. Put in code NASTY2023 and receive 35% off of your order. PA residents only. Whew. It's delish. What Baller, a deal. what do you got? What's up, boys? We got a comment over on Instagram from Eric Ingram. He asked, has Scott Walton been playing some of the best hockey in his career since the trade rumor started this year? He seems like he's making big plays every night. I'd say so. Yeah, I would too. He he's seems to level. be scoring. Yeah, every scoring. Night. I mean, he always plays with the high. Hole. Yeah. That, you know, the high intensity game, he's bringing it. But yeah, I mean, fuck, hell of a goal last night. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would I would agree with that. He seems yeah, to have he's, turned it to another level. I mean, yeah. he always plays, again, like a, a high pace, but his scoring, yeah, yes. he's just. He's contributing offensively. He's doing it all. Yeah, he is. Our boy, Lawrence. Didn't even have it's to scare deal. him. That's right, right? Didn't have to threaten his nope. hockey career to Nothing. Toronto. And- Nothing. Since Baller told him he got traded last trade deadline. <laughs> yeah. No, but he has. That's a great question. He, he he's been playing unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and out. he's a leader, and that's, you know, he's showing why he's a leader. Yep. Agreed. We got one from Strawberry Kerr Ooh. over on Instagram. What are the chances Kolosov gets an opportunity in the postseason? Man, I don't know the logistics of all of this and how that would work. I mean, again, yeah, I don't know either. I would like to think he's, he's going to report to Lehigh, get right. some games. Yeah. But going into the playoffs, they're going to carry a third goaltender. Right? Well, for yeah, black for sure. Aces and, 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 you know, your one loss, one bad game off before he's maybe backing up, and then he, yeah. who knows or how an it goes. Injury. An injury, yeah, then right. knock wood. We don't want that, right? But, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there, to me, there could be a, a chance. It just all depends on performance, obviously, team performance, goalie performance, and then injuries, right? Well, I mean, also, you know, we <clears throat> talked about actually with Big Bird about the, one of the things that changes the video. There's probably not a lot of scouting report. Well, there, there may be the, these days, but like if he say he comes into the American League and he gets to play some games and he wins, what if he plays unreal? Of course, they're trying to get into the playoffs. They may keep him there to play there, but you just never know. I mean, I, logistically, again, like Baller probably knows all that kind of stuff better than we do, but um, you never know. You never see know. crazier things happen. 100%. And the fact that they, they sign him and he's leaving Russia. Yes. Not that there's a, an exact plan, like, at this moment, but, I mean, you have to you have to have some sort of, like, cushion and net, right? I right. Mean, again, right. going into playoffs, you get one bad bounce, and, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, you, yeah. need, a, you need a goalie. So I would like to think it's kind of preparing for – the worst or yeah, you know and, and or maybe maybe he li- lights it up and yeah he squeezes himself in there based on performance you know i think it's just a matter of time to see how this thing plays out yeah I, th- sure. I think the one thing there's a little confusion about besides the fact of when he's going to come over here is like so you only get four call-ups after the deadline and cat friendly says the flyers have already used four some reporters are saying they've only used three but you could kind of make something up, and then you, yeah, you, tweet, get you got a groin injury. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think there's creative ways around yeah. these rules, um, but I think just having him in the system av- available. I mean, the guys get hurt. You know, like little little things. It doesn't have to be you know a long term injury to get right around some yeah, of these things, sure. right? So yeah. I think I mean Vegas is finding a way. Around yeah, I mean things. teams do. Um, and freaky things happen. Yeah, I guess that all goes out the window come playoff time, right? It does. Yeah, right? yeah. You're talking yeah, about the black ace. Yeah, yeah. We got nine for games sure, left, for so sure. yeah, for sure. Um, It'll like, be interesting to see. It will. Yeah. Devin Petrowski on Instagram wants to know, Nasty, how well do you remember your first game working for the Flyers? What memory from the game stands out the most? I remember it very well because that was the day I got right in Hitch's grill. I had a few Red Bulls before oh, yeah. the game. Sounds about right. And we were playing in Mellon Arena. Penguins, the old the right. Yep. And Forsberg was the captain. It was that year. Year you you got your first games. And uh, I don't know if you remember me telling this story, but I went in 
to the coach's room and the little coach's room, Terry Murray's in there, uh, Johnny Stevens, Hitch, and I think Reggie Lemelin was on the yep. trip. And I'm like, I came around the corner and I was like, you know how loud I can be. And I'm like, all right, coaches, let's go here. You know, and fucking Hitch, he jumps a little Scare bit. The shit and out Johnny's of shaking his head and Murph's like looking at me. I'm like, you ready to go, Hitch? He goes, Jesus Christ, <laughs> young Derek, get off that Red Bull. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be ready, Hitch. And he goes, you got to be calm and collected. That's what you got to do. We lost, I think, 3 nothing. Oh, yeah. Uh, that game. <laughs> and, and Peter, one thing I, I do remember about that game, too, is uh, Fopa was an Easton guy. But he used Bauer sticks, and I had to black them out. Mm. Um, and the Eastern people were not very happy. Oh, I can they imagine. were not very happy. But it was still pretty cool. My first game as the head guy with the Flyers, you know, obviously that was a dream of mine. So I, that's what I, I remember. Quite a few things, but it, it was a. It sucked losing, but it was a great day. Did you uh, did you mention to Hitch that it was maybe a combination of Red Bull, <laughs> Sudafed, and possibly some DD? <laughs> I don't think I had any DD on me that day, but you would have probably thought I did. You would have thought I did. When I came around the room real loud, yeah. like no one was expecting it. All of them kind of jumped and hit. I think Hitch's pen went up near. Oh, I'm sure. He, he almost had like the big it. one, the heart attack. Thank God he liked me. Yeah. Only because of Johnny Stevens. That yeah. was the only reason. Poor Hitch imagine. only lasted about nine games yeah. that year, but uh, I got him good that one. Oh, would have loved to have seen it. Great question, though. We got one more. This one's from Showtime here in 91 over on Instagram. He asks, when is the Phillies tailgate this year? Oh, cool. great question, Showtime. Well, let's get on that. Nass, nice. lock her down. Yeah, we had a great time last summer. That was fun. Yeah, rapidly approaching. I'm not sure exactly, but we got to yeah. look at the schedule and get something on the books. We have to. I love that day. It was a great day. It was a great, great day. Great weather. For sure. Some good peeps. Yeah, good peeps. Clear rum. Was there. We'll have everything there. Oh. Garage, beer, we'll <laughs> yeah. have it all. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing it. We're setting it up. Oh, yeah. It's on you, Nast. All right. Let me know. I'll do it. All right. Stay tuned. Great question. And that's a wrap. Wow. 151 in the books. 151 in the books. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks to everyone. Yep. Been a lot of fun. Yep. We're going to regroup here until 152 next week. Yeah. And be sure to subscribe, throw out a comment, ask a question, get inside Nasty's head a little. Yeah. And until next week for 152, be sure to stay safe and enjoy the week, knuckleheads. See ya.